Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Use of Protein Expression System for Influenza Mucosal Vaccine Research, presented by Dr. Hariki Hasegawa, Director of the Department of Pathology at National Institute of Infectious Diseases, live from Tokyo, Japan. I'm Susie Valdez, and I will be your moderator for this educational webcast presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Gibco, part of Thermo Fisher Scientific. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located at the lower left of the presentation window and type your questions into the box that appear on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice that if you will be viewing the presentation in the slide window. To enlarge that window, just click on the screen icon located on the lower right. If you have trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window or the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. Please join me now in welcoming Dr. Hideki Hasegawa. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Hideki Hasegawa from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, today, I'm going to present about the use of protein expression system for our influenza and mucosa vaccine research. Uh, we are developing the uh, more effective vaccine, which is the uh, mucosa vaccine uh, administered internally. And the, the background of the development of this vaccine is uh, followed, uh, uh, listed as follows. Uh, there are, because there is current problems associated with the design of the flu vaccine, uh, it is difficult to predict the influenza virus strain that will cause the next epidemic or a pandemic, and thus various vaccines were tested for the induction of the cross protections. And subcutaneous vaccination is not very uh, effective if endogeneity of the vaccine strain is different from the field strain. Subcutaneous flu vaccine reduces the severity of the disease but doesn't prevent the infection itself. To solve these problems, a new effective vaccination method is necessary that can induce mucosa immunity safely and that can protect from uh, variant viruses. This is a figure of the mucosal surfaces, which is the front line of the battle between the virus and the, our host immune systems. And the, uh, beyond the uh, infection of the virus to the mucosal epithelial cells, uh, there is a ma two major uh, antibody responses occurred. One is the induction of the IgG uh, antibodies uh, in, the, in the serum. And the other is the IgA antibodies, which is actively secreted on the surface of the mucosa. Um, the, we, we can prepare uh, these the, uh, secreted antibodies before the virus arrives to the cell cells. We can prevent the infection itself. So on this uh, uh, research, we uh, take advantage of the protein expression, uh, protein expression system to produce the uh, hemagglutinin molecule uh, of the influenza viruses because there is uh, many strains and the subtypes of the, uh, in influenza viruses, so we need the specific antigens to detect the specific antibodies in the samples. So we produce the, uh, each hemagglutinin uh, molecule by the expression system using the XP29F uh, cells. The, it, it, with this system, we uh, already prepared more than 10 uh, hemagglutinin uh, molecule, which is a, a trimeric form of the hemagglutinin as a nature form. And the, uh, we can uh, obtain the milligram order of the, uh, each hemagglutinating in the 200 milliliter cultures. Um, I would like to show you the example of our, uh, the, the uh, result of our experiments. The, uh, the application of the uh, HCA protein expressed by the XP293F cell ex system is used 
for as an, uh, protein as an ELISA antigen to detect the specific IgG antibody and IgA antibodies in the samples. And number two, use the protein as an experimental vaccine antigen. Okay, this is a schedule, um, the design and schedule of our uh, human experiments using the inactivated four virion vaccine for the seasonal influenza virus H3 and 2. The 50 healthy uh, volunteers uh, internally administered the uh, four virion vaccine uh, twice with uh, three weeks intervals. And three weeks after the second vaccination, the uh, samples of the serum and another wash was uh, collected. Um, this is the result of the hemagglutination inhibition titers in the serum in the left panel and the nasal wash in the, on, on the right panel. As you see here, that after the second vaccination, the uh, hemagglutination inhibition titer in the serum increased from the 16.2 to 68.8, and the subcutaneous vaccination induced only the serum antibodies, but nasal administration of the vaccine induced the, the hemagglutination inhibition titer uh, antibody in the nasal washes, as you see here, uh, GMT, which is GMT is 38.8 after the second vaccination here. Uh, this is a summary of the antibody responses in the serum, the uh, mean geometric increase and the conversion rate and the protein rate is meet to the uh, criteria for the serum HI antibody in European Medical Agency uh, listed in, 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 in the table. And in addition to the serum antibodies, we can observe the uh, nasal wash uh, 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 HI antibodies here, as it's seen here. Um, the, the previous result was the result of the, the seasonal influenza virus. Uh, here I show you the, uh, the same experiment the protocol, but the, uh, the strain is different. That's the, this time we used the highly pathogenic avian influenza A virus, H5N1. Um, the, we internally administered the uh, inactivated four variant vaccine and the uh, collected sample three weeks after the vaccination. And the result is completely different from the seasonal strains. Uh, you see here in the serum and the uh, nasal wash, the, the inter, uh, antibody response is the very low. But during the course of the experiment, we measured uh, the antibody secreting plasma cells in the PBMC seven days after the vaccination, each vaccination. As you see here, even the uh, in, uh, antibody title was low, but the, after the second vaccination, the a number of the plasma cell in the, second, uh, the vaccinated individuals is uh, increased in 100%. So we decided to perform the additional vaccination uh, to those individuals, and the result was here. The, uh, this is the result neutralizing the titer after the second vaccination, but after the uh, additional vaccination. The, uh, all individuals responded to the vaccination here. So uh, this is a summary of the neutralizing antibody. Uh, as you see here, the mean geometry increase is 32.9, and the conversion rate is 88%, and the neutralization antibody is more than 1.8, uh, 1 to 40 is 88%. So the, to naive individuals, the third vaccination is necessary. For conclusion of this part, we have examined the antibody response of internal administration of the seasonal influenza virus H3N2 inactivated for virion vaccine in healthy uh, adults. We could observe high H antibody titers and the neutralization antibody titers not only in the serum but also in the nasal washes. And administration of inactivated four virion H5N1 vaccine twice was not sufficient to induce neutralizing antibodies in the serum. And another wash to levels found after seasonal influenza inactivated four virion vaccination. 
By performing an additional internasal vaccination, the neutralizing antibody titer in the serum and the nasal was increased dramatically. So serious side effects were not observed through these clinical experiments. So next, we further characterize the neutralizing antibodies in nasal wash. So after the vac internasal vaccination with H5N1 and, uh, vaccine, so nasal wash samples collected and concentrated to the uh, concentrated and the used for the characterization. So who is the main player in close protection in the nasal wash? And uh, we measured the, the amount of the antibodies in the nasal wash and the left upper column showing that 70% that of the antibody in nasal wash is the uh, IgA and approximately 30% is the IgG and a slight amount of the IgM was observed here. We separated these nasal washes by size using the zero filtration chromatography in fractions. And as you see here low, in the lower left uh, figure, there are two peaks. The red peak correspond to the uh, monomeric IgG antibody, and the blue peak correspond to the uh, IgA antibodies. That we performed the uh, naive page for the each fractions, and the left right figure showing the, uh, the fraction 32, 31 containing the monomeric IgA antibody, and the uh, fraction 30, uh, 26 to 30 containing the dimeric form of IgA. This is the most famous form of secretory IgA, but we can also see the larger band in the fraction 26, uh, 23, 4, 5, and 6. So to further analyze, we characterize the, the weight, uh, molecular weight of these antibodies. As uh, you see here, the first band we could see was 151 kilodalton peak, which correspond to the uh, two heavy chain and two light chain number one. Uh, 150, which is the 150 killed out, and this is a monomeric form of IgA antibody. And the next peak we could observe is a 406 uh, killed out peak, uh, which correspond to the four heavy chain and four light chain, and one J chain and one secretory component, uh, which uh, is a 410 killed out, which is the uh, uh, dimeric form of secretary IgA. And next peak, 562 and 722 uh, correspond to the uh, six heavy chain light chain and eight heavy chain light chain respectively. Uh, those are the uh, trimeric form and the tetramic form of IgA. And to characterize the uh, structure of those antibodies further, we observed those fractions by the atomic force microscopy, AFM, and small fraction showing the existence of the monomeric form of IgA, which has the two FAB and one FC, like here, the very left panel. And the middle-sized fraction showing the containing the uh, dimeric form of Ig, secretary IgA, which has a four arms and the uh, secretory component in the middle. And we also could see the uh, larger form of IgA, which has the uh, eight arms, eight FAB, those, uh, those fractions containing the tetrameric IgA antibodies. So the, there is a larger uh, form of IgA, uh, those, one of them are tetramic IgA shown right here. For the next, we uh, wanted to know the functional aspect of those the, uh, polymeric IgA antibodies. So we measured the uh, neutralization against the uh, wild viruses uh, in, the, in each fraction. So that, 
that we uh, vaccinated with the uh, Indonesian strain of H5N1, which is grade 2.1. So right upper panel showing the all fraction has a neutralizing ability to grade 2.1 uh, Indonesian strain of H5N1. But using the same fractions and measured the different strains, different clade of the viruses, such as the Vietnamese strain of H5N1, which is a clade one, it's a lower right, and the uh, Laos strain of H5N1, which is uh, clade 2.3.4. As you see here, the uh, monomeric fraction lacks the neutralization against the different clade of the viruses. So it means the uh, polymeric IgA larger than dimer is very important for the cross neutralization against the variant viruses. Next, we further uh, measured the uh, neutralization ability of each, uh, each form of the, uh, the uh, IgA antibodies. And this, the right graph showing the minimum neutralizing, neutralizing titer. So the small number means the stronger neutralization titer. So as you see here, the dimer is stronger than monomer, and the tetramer is stronger than the dimer, and the polymer is stronger than tetramer uh, neutralization ability. They, they, they are showing the stronger neutralizing ability. So the, uh, those are the uh, characteristic of the IgA in the polymeric form. Uh, no, I mean the, uh, uh, the uh, polyclonal situation. So we wanted to know if this characteristic is the same to the mono, uh, mo uh, monoclonal situation. So we tried to construct the uh, monoclonal IgA antibodies both the uh, monomeric form and the, the polymeric forms. So we tried to product the uh, recombinant polymeric IgA antibodies and the characterization of the neutralization. So the experimental flow is that we vaccinate the individuals internally and collected the PBMC from those individuals seven days after the vaccination and isolate the plasma cells from the PBMC and cloned the antibody gene and produce the recombinant antibodies, then characterize the recombinant, those in, in recombinant antibodies. In order to produce the, uh, I, the, the, the clones, the, those uh, antibody genes, we uh, selected the uh, antibody producing cells as the uh, negative selection with a linker marker and a positive selection with uh, CD19 and CD27 and CD38. Uh, this fraction cells are collected and the, the single cell cloned and the, uh, the antibody gene was uh, cloned. Then we used the protein expression system using the XP293F cells uh, introducing the component of the secretory Ig antibody, which is a heavy chain and light chain and J chain and secretory component, we managed to uh, found out the method to produce the, the polymeric Ig antibodies by this XP293F cell cultures. Then separated those antibodies, which which has the same variable regions and the measures the minimum concentration of antibodies for neutralization against the H1N1 uh, influenza virus. As you see here, M stands for the monomer and D dimer, T tetramer. Yeah, surprisingly, in even the uh, monoclonal situation that the, those have the same variable region, the uh, dimer has a stronger neutralization compared to the monomer and the tetramer has the stronger concent uh, the stronger uh, neutralization ability compared to the dimers. And C is the crude containing all type of the IgA antibodies here. And so we could obtain the several clones of the antibodies which neutralize the influenza viruses 
and we could now manage the make the different uh, uh, type of the antibodies, the making the uh, monoclonal antibodies such as IgG uh, and the IgA. Those have that uh, transplant the variable region to the IgA, and also could uh, make the trimeric Ig antibodies in vitro. And when we compare the neutralization against the uh, uh, influenza virus, it was surprising that when we change from the, uh, when the, the, in, in, uh, when the uh, antibodies in IgG form, you could see the slight neutralization against the H1N1 here, but when we change the, uh, to the IgA1, uh, IgA monomer, even though the uh, variable region is the same, the neutralization against H1 is increasing. And uh, surprisingly, when we change the form to the tetramer, that this antibody could neutralize not only H1N1, but H5N1 uh, influenza viruses, like here. And in clone B monoclonal antibodies, the in, when this is the uh, IgG form, we could see the slight amount of the neutralization against H1N1. And by changing it to the uh, IgA monomer form, increase the neutralization. And when we change to the uh, tetramic form, it dramatically increase the neutralization against H1N1, and we can also observe the uh, neutralization against the H5N1, like here. So in conclusion, uh, in this system, we can also uh, produce the uh, milligram order of antibodies in 200 uh, milliliter cell cultures. Here. Okay. In conclusion, the secretory IgG antibodies induced by internal influenza vaccine from superstructure of the dimer, trimer, and tetramer, and the polymeric IgG antibodies show higher neutralizing stability to influenza virus compared to monomeric or dimeric antibodies. And the mammalian protein expression system helps the research on the influenza mucosa vaccine and the Ig antibodies, which has the potential as a new antibody medicine. Okay, oh, I am missing one line. The, the polymeric monoclonal Ig antibodies were uh, produced and showed higher neutralizing ability to influenza viruses. And uh, multimeric secretory Ig antibodies like these contribute to the prevention of influenza virus infection. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank my colleagues uh, listed here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Hasegawa, for your informative presentation, but more importantly, the important research you're doing in Japan. Amazing. We will now start thank the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have questions yeah. you'd like to ask, Please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window and type your questions into the box that appear on the screen. And then click the Send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Dr. Hasegawa, the first question from an audience member is, why are the responses to H3N2 and H5N1 so different in humans? Oh, yeah, thank you very much for the question. So the, in human, uh, the human experiments, we observed the uh, quite different responses against the same component of the vaccine for H1N1, H3N2, and H5N1. Because the uh, H3N2 is the one strain uh, included in the uh, seasonal influenza virus, so we may experience uh, exposed to those viruses uh, before. But for H5N1, this is the uh, avian influenza virus, and the, uh, most of people are uh, naive to those uh, viruses. So that, that's caused the uh, different uh, responses against the, the same protocol of the vaccination, through the, that we, which are the internal vaccination of the, the, the vaccine. That is the main reason. 
<clears throat> okay, thank you so much. Um, a researcher would also like to know, how long do HA-specific serum IgG antibodies and mucosal IgA antibodies last after the intranasal vaccination? Oh, that is a very important point. That the, uh, we uh, measured the, uh, the follow-up, the uh, antibody responses, but, but uh, it, our uh, result is not the experiment in human, but we did the experiments in using the macaque monkey. After the internal vaccination, the serum IgG antibody titer lasts uh, almost one year after the vaccination. But the uh, mucosal IgG antibodies last uh, approximately three months after the vaccination. Uh, even though the uh, mucosal IgA antibodies last the uh, uh, shorter than the uh, serum IgG antibody response, uh, the uh, antibodies, uh, the uh, IgA antibody can induce very quickly after the exposure of the uh, virus, even after the one year. So the, uh, the, the, so the, even though the, uh, that's the, Duration time is shorter, but uh, it can be uh, quickly induced by the exposure to the virus. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, our last question from an audience member is, what is the mechanism by which the tetrameric IgA antibody has more broad neutralizing effects against heterologous um, influenza virus strains. Oh, thank you very much. That is a very important point. Yes, yeah, we, we, yeah, the, actually, the uh, monomeric antibodies, including IgG and monomeric IgA, can neutralize the virus when the uh, antibody attached to the neutralizing epitope existing in the HA molecule. But in case of the polymeric IgA, the size of the antibody itself is quite large. So the uh, antibody uh, attached to the surrounding area of the, uh, the neutralizing epitope also can neutralize the virus. And if there are the consensus uh, sequence uh, around the uh, neutralizing epitope exists, so the antibody which binds to that area can neutral also neutralize the uh, even the viruses, hetero subtypic viruses. Wonderful, thank you very much. As we close, it looks like you have some nice comments from attendees who I think may know you and are saying some compliments about your presentation. That's wonderful. Do you have anything you'd like to say as we close for your audience members? Uh, no, just to, I'd like to thank everybody who listened to my uh, talk. Thank you very much. Wonderful. We just want to say thank you again for your wonderful presentation. If there are no more questions, I'd like to also thank LabRoots and Gibco, part of Thermo Fisher Scientific, for making today's educational webcast possible. Additional questions will be answered and published on Thermo Fisher Scientific's website. You will receive an email notification when answers are available. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through April 2018. You will receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when the webcast will be available for replay. Please, please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Thank you again, Dr. Hasagawa. That's all for Thank now. You Thank you much. for joining us. We hope to see everyone again soon. Enjoy the conference. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.